El objetivo de ellos era... Their objective was to destabilize Venezuela by preventing President Chavez's resumption of power. The combination of reasons in which they step up their attacks on Venezuela. Even for Venezuela, there were two guns. The 2010 detention in Venezuela of terrorist Francisco Antonio Chavez Abarca and his declarations exposed the connection between his criminal past under Luis Faltino Clemente Posada Carriles and the current subversive plans. I arrive in my Ketia and get my passport without the Guatemala exit stamp. We had to burn tires, promote street disturbances. Anything that a political party would do against another with different principles and interests. Pick up fights. How did I get to Maiketia? I was just out of prison in El Salvador. And I was, I don't know how you say that here, but I was broke after two years. I owed even my shirt. Then they say there was a plan for Venezuela. And I say, well, I'd do it if I can. Why do you come to Venezuela? Because we were ready for certain actions. Conspiracy. And how did you get here to Venezuela? How did you get in? Through fraud, with a false passport. On July 13, 2010, the media confirmed the finding of another piece of the puzzle, part of the conspiracy against Venezuela and the region. Venezuelan Alejandro Peña Esclusa is detained. Venezuelan citizen Alejandro Peña Esclusa was detained. According to information disclosed by Francisco Chavez Abarca, this man is linked to plans to commit crimes here in the national territory. We are following up on information contributed by terrorist Francisco Antonio Chavez Abarca as part of our investigation. There is material evidence of what might be explosives, more than a hundred detonators, some activated by heat and others by electricity. And this is just what's happening now all over Latin America. The combination of reasons for which they keep attacking Venezuela is, number one, oil. And two, Latin American integration, meaning the U.S. is losing its backyard, its domination on the region. And then there is ideology. They had said that no other model could benefit the people. The U.S. Congress became a comfortable scenario from which the American extreme right fostered the tightening of the Cuban blockade, while the anti-Cuban interests opened the way to terrorist actions. 
Congressman Robert Menendez from New Jersey, an opportunistic and ambitious politician of Cuban descent, promotes financial assistance to the counter-revolution and to radio and TV Marti, linked to the Cuban American National Foundation, and to late terrorist Arnaldo Monson Plasencia, who financed his election campaigns and the screen of sabotage in Havana in the 1990s. Traditionally, his assistant was Jose Manuel Alvarez, the criminal who murdered Cuban diplomat Felix Garcia Rodriguez in the U.S. One of Menendez's most active consultants is Guillermo Hernandez, also a personal assistant to Posada Carriles, who denied the paternity rights of the Cuban child Ilian Gonzalez. He has recently spoken in intimate circles of his concern over the detention of terrorist Chavez Abarca for fear of dual implications. In El Salvador, as we talked in the Radisson Hotel, somebody asked Posada to tell me about the Cuban plane in Barbados. As I was leaving the court, a communist journalist there tells me, hey doc, you're accused of being the mastermind of the blowing up of this plane. He says, Castro has 150 planes, the MiGs and these other two. Then I go back and he says, would you then blow up the other 150 tomorrow? And I say, look, no, I wouldn't. What would the man think? That I was chickening out, that I was afraid. Then he says, and why would you not blow them up tomorrow, Doc? And I use a strong word then, one can use here and say, because I have blown them up yesterday, Paul. International terrorist Orlando Borchavali supported counter-revolutionary gangs operating in the Escambray Mountains until the 1960s. He left Cuba for the U.S. and was recruited by the CIA. He set up nearly 50 bombs in Cuban offices in America and founded various subversive organizations like Cuban Power and the Coordinadora de Organizaciones Revolucionarias Unidas, CORU. With Posada Carriles, he masterminded the bombing of the Cuban plane of Barbados, executed by the Venezuelans Hernán Ricardo and Freddy Lugo. In coordination with the Cuban American National Foundation, he continues with his violent plans and aggressions on Cuba. Posada said that it was a plane taking off from Venezuela and that he had brought down that plane and had spent seven years in prison and had escaped after paying some cops there and that he had come out in a wardrobe. Posada also said that we couldn't stop and gave me an address in Mexico. It was the Cuban embassy in Mexico City. I traveled there to see the place and returned to El Salvador and said to Posada that I was already familiar with it. He gave me the means and I returned to Mexico and hid the explosives in shoes and the detonators too. I uh, set up the bomb, but this time there were only material damages. Then I was in El Salvador. Sala called me from Guatemala. He wanted me there. The murder plan in Guatemala, as they explained it to me, was with two snipers and one trainer, all of them Cubans. They were staying at the Crown Plaza Hotel and they would be shooting from the rooftop of that building. I 
tenía muy buenas relaciones. He had very good connections in El Salvador from presidents Calderón Sol, Cristiani, like Calderón Sol and Cristiani of Arena, the right-wing party in El Salvador, Francisco Flores, to Francisco Flores and Rodrigo Avila, who was chief of police twice. He was friends with them, and they visited with the Cuban American National Foundation people in Miami. All those right-wing people in Florida know them too. For instance, Francisco Flores used to go marlin fishing with San Feliu, Rivera, and Posada. In November 2000, the public threats of well-known terrorists would be implemented in Panama through an attempt on the life of Cuban President Fidel Castro. Posada Carriles intended to place at the university's main hall 34.44 pounds of C4 explosive with very destructive action in a 200-meter area. He comes to my house in El Salvador and invites me to a Mr. Don, which is a big cafeteria. Then he says he has this plan and we must go to Panama. At that moment, he only said he was to kill Mr. Fidel Castro.